Look up. Go ahead. Step outside tonight. Just look up at the vast, dark canvas above. You might see the moon, a few planets, and a countless smattering of stars. If you're lucky, far from city lights, you might even glimpse the faint milky band of our own galaxy stretching across the heavens. It feels like you're seeing everything, a grand cosmic spectacle laid bare. But what if I told you that all of it, every star, every galaxy, every glowing nebula you can see with the most powerful telescopes, is just the froth on an immense invisible ocean? What if the universe we know is just a tiny fraction of what's really out there? So, what exactly is this dark matter? Let's get a clear definition on the table. In the simplest terms, dark matter is a form of matter that does not interact with light. Think about it. The reason you can see the chair across the room is because light from a lamp or the sun bounces off it. That light then travels into your eyes. The reason you can't see through a wall is because the wall absorbs that light. Dark matter does neither. Light particles, called photons, pass right through it as if it weren't there at all. That's the dark part. But it's still matter. All matter has mass. Mass creates gravity. Dark matter is a cosmic ghost whose gravitational shadow is the only proof of its existence. Imagine you're walking through a field on a windy day. You can't see the wind, can you? It's invisible. But you can see the trees swaying. You can see the grass bending. You can see the leaves skittering across the ground. You feel its push against your body. You don't doubt the wind's existence just because you can't see it. You infer its presence from its effects on everything around it. Dark matter is like that cosmic wind. We can't see it directly, but we can see its powerful influence on the stars, on gas, on galaxies. Our first major clue that something was amiss came from watching galaxies spin. Think of our solar system. Mercury zips around in just 88 days. Distant Neptune takes a leisurely 165 years to complete one orbit. This makes perfect sense according to Newton's laws of gravity. The Sun contains almost all the mass in the solar system, so its gravitational pull gets weaker the farther you go. Objects in the outskirts naturally move slower. Astronomers in the 1970s, led by Vera Rubin, expected to see the same thing in spiral galaxies. They measured the speeds of stars and gas clouds at various distances from the galactic center. But that's not what they found. To their astonishment, stars on the far edges were moving just as fast as stars near the center, like a merry-go-round where outer horses spin as fast as the ones in the middle. Physics says those outer stars should be flung off into space, yet the galaxy remains intact. The only logical explanation, there had to be more mass far more, forming a vast, spherical halo. This was the first smoking gun for dark matter. Long before, Fritz Zwicky saw the same problem in galaxy clusters. He found galaxies moving too fast to be held by the visible mass alone. He dubbed the missing mass Dunkel Materi, dark matter. Einstein predicted gravitational lensing, mass warps spacetime and bends light. Cluster lenses stretch background galaxies into arcs and smeared multiples. By measuring the distortion, we audit the mass, and it exceeds stars and hot gas by a wide margin. Independent of motions, lensing reveals vast smooth clouds of dark matter. Different methods, same answer. Galaxies and clusters are embedded in enormous halos of invisible matter. Our third and perhaps most compelling piece of evidence comes not from nearby galaxies, but from looking back to the dawn of time. We study the cosmic microwave background, the faint afterglow of the Big Bang. Released when the universe was about 380,000 years old, it's a baby picture imprinted with minuscule hot and cold fluctuations, seeds of structure. Measure their size and distribution, and they're not big enough to form today's galaxies and clusters in time. Ordinary matter was locked to light, photon pressure fought gravity and slowed collapse. Dark matter ignores light, so it clumped early, digging gravitational wells before the CMB was released. When matter decoupled from light, gas fell into those wells, birthing the first stars and galaxies. Dark matter acted as invisible scaffolding, the cosmic web of filaments and nodes. Our simulations match reality only with cold, slow-moving dark matter. Without it, 
galaxies are too small and large-scale structure never forms. The CMB confirms dark matter shaped the cosmos from the very beginning. The evidence is clear. Dark matter is out there. But what is it? To answer that, we have to catch some. Scientists are pursuing this mystery on three main fronts – direct detection, indirect detection, and production at colliders. Direct detection builds ultra-quiet detectors deep underground, often using super-pure liquid xenon or argon at cryogenic temperatures. Billions of particles may pass through you each second. Almost all leave no trace. Very rarely, one might nudge a nucleus, creating a tiny flash or vibration that sensitive sensors can record. So far, experiments like Lux Zeppelin and Xenon-T see no definitive signal, but they're narrowing the search. Indirect searches scan for annihilation byproducts, gamma rays, neutrinos, in places rich in dark matter, like the galactic center and dwarf galaxies. Colliders try to make dark matter, Invisible particles would steal energy and momentum, seen as missing energy in detectors. So far, no smoking gun. The search continues with every new collision and every quieter detector. After the deep mines, giant telescopes, and colossal colliders, what's the ultimate payoff?